Okay, and this is your second um, practice packet. This is your test prep packet to help you prepare for your subtraction test. And because of that, I'm going to actually work some of the subtraction problems in our different methods of subtraction on your test. Um, you are going to have some subtraction problems where they are using place value strategy, which is your expanded form subtraction. Um, there may be some across zeros that you might want to do your add-on. You're not going to be required to do add-on, and it won't ask you to do add-on, but that is also a strategy to help you. And then, of course, your traditional subtraction with regrouping. So on your study guide packet, you start with a word problem, and your word problem is about Mandy, and Mandy's making some cookies, and she's already made this many cookies. How many does she have, have left to make? This is a zero problem, so I would like to work this, and you might want to do this on scratch paper with me. I want to work this as add-on. So remember, when you're doing add-on, you start with the smallest number, and you try to make 10, because we want to turn all of these digits into zeros. So 5 plus 5 would be 10, so we'll start by adding 5. Now I want to turn my tens place into 10, so if I add 2 to 8, and since it's in the tens place, that's 20. And now I'm at 500, super close. I want my 500 now to be a 600, so I just need to add 100 more, and voila, I've turned it into 600. Circle what I added, I added 5, I added 20, and I added 100. 125, of course it's 125. So there's my answer. How many cookies does she have left to make? I'm gonna come up here and put my answer. Oop, not 55. 125. Cookies. So that is the add-on strategy. I really do like it when I'm having to go across zeros. I think there's less mistakes if you understand it. You don't have to use this method. Your test is not gonna require you to use this method. You are more than welcome to subtract across zeros. Just make sure you're the only one that's a 10 is the one over in one's place. Okay, this problem here, you are gonna see some strip diagrams, so you need to know what a subtraction strip diagram looks like. That is when you have your biggest number and you are trying to find the rectangle. So here we have three numbers. So my suggestion, and again, this is just one way to work it, I would put these two together first by adding them up and then subtract my total from that. Or you can set up two subtraction problems. You cannot do them together. They have to be separate because of regrouping. Then take that answer and subtract the second number from it. That's the second way. Because I'm better at addition than I am subtraction, I could add these together and then only subtract one time. But I'll let you decide how you want to work that one out. Okay, this one again is across zeros. Um, just, I would do the add-on method, but just in case you are deciding to do traditional subtraction, it should look like this. There should only be one 10 on the top when you're borrowing. I'll let you do the subtraction, but your borrowing should look like that. Which problem solved correctly? Okay, you're gonna have several. I'm gonna put a big old circle around this one. And start. You are gonna have several questions, problems on your subtraction test where you have to work out the choices. You don't know which one is correct until you work it out. So this is not one problem. This is four subtraction problems that you're gonna to need to work out. I'm not gonna do this for you, but this should fill up your scratch paper a lot. You're gonna to need to set up A, C, 
set up B. Double check those numbers. Set up C. And set up D. And you're going to need to subtract each one of those until you find the one that is correct. So I wouldn't even look at my answers. I would just work out my problems like they were on my paper. And then when I got them all finished, then I would look to find the one that matched. I'll let you work those out. Um, I'll do the traditional method on those as well. Um, you are gonna have to regroup on both places here. Just here. Just in the tens place and you won't have to regroup at all on that last one okay so i'll let you work that out now your subtraction test is going to be on the computer so you are going to have to be able to go from the computer screen to the notebook to your paper to work your problems out all right number five trey went shopping he spent clue word he's spending lots of things all right, so again, my suggestion is to put together all of those items that he spent. I would do addition first and add all of his amounts that he spent up because I can add quickly and better and better again. Then I would take that answer and subtract it from my total. That's how I would work it. If you do it a different way, you are gonna to need to take 300, subtract 49 from it, take that answer, subtract 125 from it, take that answer and subtract 56. If you do it the subtraction way, you're gonna just subtract three times. If you do addition first and then subtraction, you'll only have to work out two problems. So that's my suggestion. Um, have left, of course, is another clue word. And your answer, well, I just need a dollar sign in front because it, it's money. And number six, same thing. Rita is making some blankets. She sells, that's a clue word, 45 on Monday, 103 on Tuesday. How many blankets remain? Another clue word for subtraction. Again, me personally, I would put the two amounts that she sold together first then i would subtract that from 200 or you can subtract 45 from 200 and then take that answer and subtract 103 from it that's up to you your label word of course is going to be blankets because that's what these are all right so maybe that'll help you out on your practice on the next page, simple subtraction, simple subtraction, simple subtraction. If you want to do a different strategy on these, um, I'd like to do our place value strategy because you are going to see that on your test. So that would be 700 plus 0 plus 3. This would be 500 plus 60 plus 6. Um, hundreds are fine, tens are not, so we're going to move an entire hundred to the tens place. My ones are not okay, so I need to take one ten, so that becomes 90. And this is now 13, because I'm taking a 10 across. 13 minus 6 is 7. 90 minus 60 is 30. And 600 minus 500 is 100. Put them together, we get 137. So that is place value subtraction on that one. You will see, I know of at least one problem that is going to look like place value subtraction, possibly more than that. Number two, you might want to do your add-on method or just go across those zeros with traditional and same with three. Okay, four, you have a strip diagram we know we're subtracting because our total is here same thing on five we know we're subtracting you have a number line so they're starting at 100 and they're going backwards to 55 so 
we're going to subtract 100 minus 55 and get our answer. You could even do the add-on method here, making 10. That's up to you. Word problem, cookies again. So how many more big, big, big clue word to subtract? We have Cody and Brandon collecting seashells. We know Cody's, we don't know Brandon, so we're going to have to subtract to find the difference between those. We have a squirrel getting some acorns on Monday and some acorns on Tuesday. There's our clue word. How many more? Tells me to subtract. We want to know the difference between the two days. Number 10. Please pay close attention. There are at least two problems on your test, if not more, two that I remember, where you are going to need to do the estimate of a difference. So we are not going to subtract these numbers. We're going to subtract the estimate. So if we do hundreds place, that will be 900 because the 3 is weak. Take away 500 because 9 is strong. And the difference between those, you can figure that up. If you decide to do tens place, you get 930, take away 490. I would work both of them and see if I get the same answer. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think you will, but see how close they are. Now, on your test, how are you going to know whether to round it to hundreds or tens? Well, you're going to have to look at your multiple choices. If A, B, C, and D are all rounded in the hundreds place, they all have two zeros, and you know you need to round to the hundreds. If they all have one zero, you know you need to round to your tens. If they have a mixture, then I would do both and see which of my choices are there. If, um, if it tells you in the problem to estimate to the hundreds, of course you have to do hundreds, and if it says to the tens, of course you have to do tens. So I'll practice doing both on number 10. And I'm fine if you want to put both answers too. Okay, so that. And then the only other thing you have this week is just practicing your subtraction. There will be some where you don't have to borrow at all. There will be some, well, I said that. I don't see any that you have to borrow on. Oh, right here. Some you are going to have to regroup on. And some you're not. Okay? So practice some different strategies, some different methods. Um, practice that place value strategy where you're breaking it up. Practice some add-ons, especially if you have one with zeros on the top. And definitely practice your traditional.